Well guys, I seem to be late again to these diecast challenges. I got caught up with life, you know. But anyways, I thought I'd catch up late. Better late than never. I want to show off some cars that many of you guys probably never seen before. Uh, so what we're looking at here is a 1160 scale or N scale car. It's by a company called IMU. And it's a, the car itself is a Gogo Mobile, which is a micro car. It was a micro car made from 1955 to 1969. And they had little two-stroke, two-cylinder engines, and they were between 250 to 400 cc's, making between 14 and 19 horsepower. So not a really, uh, not a land speed record type of car. To give you an idea about the the size, here's an N scale Mercedes and a, a Mercedes truck. So this is a micro car. It's very small. So in real life and in uh, this form here. 1160s N scale, it's a really popular model railroading scale. Even though this car was minuscule, it actually had an independent suspension, and almost 300,000 of these things were made. They came in different versions, you know, uh, they came in a van, uh, in this convertible, and a regular sedan type of thing. So, just an interesting little model. Uh, <laughs> maybe we could focus, I don't know. But this is actually a die cast model, this IMU. And there's a little red seats here. All it says is IMU down there, so yeah, it's a, it's an old casting I assume, but uh, you can buy them still pretty cheap online. Alright, so that's my first car. My second car, when I think about classic convertibles, I think of this car. I think of Austin Healey's and uh, MG's mostly, old British cars really. So this is the Austin Healey 106. It was, uh, Produced between 1956 and 1959, and uh, I guess there's not much else to say. It's just a classic-looking uh, British car, you know. Before that industry kind of fell apart, sadly. And this model is by Kyosho, so Kyosho is a great brand. Uh, balanced between uh, value and detail, I think. So you have lens headlights and very often lens taillights, although this one just has painted ones. Pretty nice looking uh, OEM wheels. The only downfall with Kyosho is their interiors are almost just always black plastic, just plain plastic, so kinda kinda weak. Okay, but this has a nice two-tone paint job that I like, so it's it's what I think of when I think about a convertible. Okay, so the next car, I almost thought about buying one of these when I was in my 30s. This is a 187 scale Lincoln Continental convertible, of course, and this is the fourth generation Continental, sold between 1961 and 69. This is made by a company called Rico, and you can still buy these cars very inexpensively today. Uh, so, again, it's 187 scale, so it's kind of small, but even still, look at this detail. Look at the metal Lincoln badge here on the hood. It's like a photo etched piece of metal. I'm not sure if you can really even see it because it's so thin, but there you go. You see that? And then you got printing on the license plate. You have uh, little orange painted turn signals. And then the lenses of the headlights, they're not painted on. They're lenses, which makes me really I don't understand why Greenlight and Auto World have all these painted headlights when a 187 can have a lensed headlight. It just bothers me. Um, we have a nice colored interior with paint details. You know, a wooden steering wheel color with some silver trim painted on there. There's even a rear view mirror in this car. Look at this interior. I mean, this is 187 scale. Okay, so again, now we get to the back here. We got the Lincoln badge there on the trunk license plate and lens tail lights we got some nice uh, white wall wheels here and this is actually a special model for me it's a pre-production model regular Ricos have the brand Rico print printed molded into the bottom probably right there but this is a special pre-production that I got from someone working at the, the factory this model is probably like 15 years old so this is something I would probably never part with because it's special not only is it an awesome car, but it's a very rare car, being pre-production. Okay, so that's that car. Now here's another one that has a lot of sentimental value. It's a Hot Wheels, or is it Matchbox? No, it's a Hot Wheels 
1931 Duesenberg. And we'll get a date, 1976. Uh, this is an old car because I have, I, this is the car I played with when I was a child. I must have been maybe six years old or something like that when I was playing with this car. It's one of the few toys I've kept since my, my youth. So even though I was y a young kid, maybe like six years old or something when I was playing with this, I knew this was a special car. It was just something about it. It's gangster. It's giant. It's just old. Uh, it's just a great car. I mean, it's before the, the Great Depression. So this car, for, by the way, Duesenberg, uh, it's a luxury brand, an American luxury brand. They only sold the chassis, I mean the chassis and the engine, and then all the bodywork was done by custom coach builders. This chassis alone was like $9,000 back then, which is around $140,000 in today's money. And then most complete cars are thirteen dollars to $19,000, which is around $300,000 in today's money. So these were expensive cars at their time, and they're really giant cars as well. Uh, around 300 of these cars are made and they auction for millions of dollars now of course they're very rare so it has an eight, seven liter straight eight cylinder engine making around 265 horsepower later on they had some supercharged variants as well but anyways it's just a a different time the great pre pre-war vehicles so okay so another one here I've, I've shown this a few times in a couple of my other videos but this is a Hot Wheels from when? Suzuki GSXR slash 4 from 2003. Yeah, I just bought this because I just every now and then like to check in on, uh, you know, hobbies and see what's going on. But this is a concept car that was built by Suzuki. Suzuki is known for motorcycles before they even got into cars, in my opinion. And this showcases the Hayabusa motorcycle engine, a 1.3 liter inline four, making around 170 horsepower. And in this little car, it's uh, 640 kilograms, so it got up to 180 miles per hour, which isn't so bad. And this concept car was made in 2001. The model itself isn't particularly awesome, being from 2003, but it's just a really interesting vehicle, I think, to look at. It never went into production. It was always supposed to be a concept car. Okay, so the next one. I used to play Xbox, and there was a video game the called Halo. It's a space shooting video game, and I played Halo one, two, and three like it was a, a religion. Me and my roommate. So I bought this car because I love the video game. Uh, this is a gold version, of course, of the. It's called a Warthog in the video game. It's made. This model is made by Johnny Lightning, and it's from 2005. So the regular Warthogs are military. This is just a weird, chrome, pimped out version of it, and I just thought it was funny because the the regular ones look really military, st military like. So this is another car I've kept for a while. So that's that. Okay. Now I featured a red version of this car in a different video. This is a Mas Maserati Tipo 61, Type 61. And this car has a lot of interesting design features. It was, uh, the chief engineer was Giolo Alfieri. And uh, this thing has a, it's called a bird cage because the frame itself, you can see a little bit uh, through the windshield here, is consists of over 200 steel tubes that are welded, welded together, creating like a bird cage frame. But, you know, when you weld that many tubes together, you have to factor in the expansion of the metal as you're welding it. So it, it takes a lot of engineering and know-how to weld up 200 tubes where they don't crack and uh, cause failures. The car itself did really well in competition racing. It won a couple SCCA championships. It won the Nürburgring 1000 kilometer race a few times. And uh, the reason why is because they went for a really low low center of gravity, low weight as well. This frame, being 200 steel tubes, only weighed 80 pounds, or 36 kilograms. So a frame of a car weighed 80 pounds. That's just amazing. Uh, also, you can see how low slung it is. They canted the engine 45 degrees this way. It's an inline four-cylinder. The carburetors are under this bump, and the cylinder heads are over here a little bit. 
So by tilting the engine, they were able to lower the hood. I mean, look how low the hood is. It's lower than the fenders. And look how low the windshield is. It's almost the same height of the fenders. So, you know, you're reducing drag by being as low to the ground as everything being as low as possible. So I find it to be a marvel of engineering. Okay, so they also put the a transaxle and uh, differential back here in the rear for better weight distribution. So very impressive, I think. Okay, so I'm not gonna talk too much in detail about this one because I think we all know what this is. You know, I think of <laughs> when I think of topless vehicles, not particularly convertibles. This is one I would have if I would, if I won the Powerball, I would definitely have to have one of these. You know, Carol Shelby contacted AC Cars and asked, "Can you make us something that we can put a V8 in?" And he took the uh, I think it was what he called the AC Ace, and uh, he pretty much made a muscle car. So when we see all these diecasts today with Liberty Walk body kits and Pandem body kits, over fender kits and stuff. Shelby thought of this decades ago, half a century ago, he thought of this kind of stuff where he would just make, you know, jam in a giant engine and of course you gotta have bigger tires and bigger fender flares and all that stuff. So, it's just, when I think of an American muscle car, this is it. I don't even know if it's called a muscle car because this is, I consider it a supercar, right? Okay, so that's what I have for you guys. Hopefully, Maybe maybe some of these cars you've never seen before. Definitely different scales and stuff. And particularly, I'm impressed the 187 scale. So here's the different scales: 187, 164. But very often, the detail in a 187 scale car is better than what's going on in 164 scale cars. So if you watch my videos, I tend to be really critical and negative because I know that you can get better for less money, and even in a smaller scale. So that's why it bothers me sometimes. But I've kind of committed myself to 164, and I'm going to continue on with it for now. I pretty much sold most of my 187 scales a long time ago. So that is that. Anyways, I appreciate the challenge, and I know I'm late. Sorry. But uh, thanks, everyone. Bye.